little bit of music while it's up here. I am homesick with COVID, so I'm going to do the best I can to teach you this lesson here online. I apologize. It's not really my preference. I would much rather be uh, at school doing the job that I love as opposed to homesick with COVID. But I'm hoping to be back later this week, so hopefully I'll see you in just a couple of days. All right, so let's move on. Lesson uh, 2.2 is going to deal with the properties of algebra and congruence. It's my hope that you took notes on this over the weekend. Um, and 7, 1, and 8 are uh, nervous about the uh, multiplication and equal signs because they have a host of problems in front of them. Today what we're going to be doing is using properties from algebra and properties from congruence in proofs. And SpongeBob uh, and the starfish. Oh my gosh, I can't remember his name right now because my brain isn't working. Um, are, uh, yeah, it'll come back to me. They're happy about that. Today's properties. So for today's properties, what we're going to be working on is we are going to be having two different types of properties. We're going to be dealing mainly with our properties of congruence and our properties of equality. Now, notice with our properties of equality, we've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, as well as substitution, reflexive, symmetric, which we're not really going to use this year, transitive property. And then also the distributive property is here under equality because we use it with equality, but we don't write distributive property of equality. It's the only one that doesn't have that of equality for some strange reason. If you write distributive property of equality, you won't really be penalized, but it's just something to be aware of. Now over here on the congruence side, we've got reflexive property, symmetric property, and the transitive property. We only have a few properties of congruence, so it's important to note that there's a vast difference in the number of properties of equality versus properties of congruence. If you haven't finished these notes yet, pause the video and finish them up. Okay, now justify each statement below with the name of the property. I'll let you pause the video uh, and turn and talk to your neighbor and try to come up with reasons why you think each one of these might work. Go. Okay, now in order to come up with these, uh, what, what I want you to do is let's think about the um, the properties here that we're talking about. So in this case, what we've got is we know that <clears throat> if we read number one, if 5x minus 3 equals 27, then 5x equals 30. Well, hopefully you notice the if and the then making this a conditional statement. So the cool thing about this is that we can think about if we move from the hypothesis to the conclusion, what did we have to do in order to get from the hypothesis to the conclusion? Well, 5x minus 3 equals 27 and 5x equals 30. Probably what you're thinking is we added 3 to both sides. So that means that the answer to this, the reason why that's why we can do that, is the addition property of equality. Because we added two things, the same thing, to both sides of the equal sign. All right, let's look at number 2. Again, we have a conditional statement, if and then. If z equals 7 and y equals 7, then z equals y. Well, clearly, what do we do to move from the hypothesis to the conclusion? We know that z is 7 and y is 7, so therefore they both must equal each other. This is a perfect example of the transitive property, where if we know that one thing equals the same thing as another thing, then those two things, z and y, must be equal to each other. We'll see that show up later on today during a couple of proofs that we'll do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number three, 10, um, 10 x plus 7 equals 10 x plus 70. We could also think about this as if and then. So if 10 x plus 7 equals 10 x plus 70, how do we go from the if to the then? Well, of course, we use the distributive property. So that's going to be the answer for that one. Number four, if 18 x equals 36, then x equals 2. This is a good one. How do we get from this to that? Well, hypothesis to conclusion? Yep, you got it. We divided by both sides, both sides by 18. Therefore, the answer is division property of equality. That's the reason why we can do what we do here. Number five, excuse me, if y equals 3x plus 7 and x equals 2, then y equals 13. 
This one's pretty cool. What we had to do here to get from the if to the then was take the x equals 2 and plug it right into x equals 2. Well, we don't have a plug-in property, but we do have a substitution property of equality. So what we did was we substituted the 2 in for the x, <clears throat> since x is equal to 2, and then we evaluated this expression, 3x plus 7, to get 13. Our last one says segment PQ is congruent to segment PQ. Sorry about this notation here. I don't know why it's so spaced out. Um, now, this is a perfect example. We have the same thing on both sides. That's going to give us a reflexive property of congruence. Now, notice on this one we use congruence because we have a congruency symbol here. That's one of our three properties of congruence. So you want to make sure that you got that one right. Okay. All right, finish up those notes, and then let's move on. Now, you also took notes on this page, so I'll go through it kind of quickly. Um, why do we care about these properties? Because they're going to give us a whole bunch more reasons why we can prove the things that we're looking to prove in geometry. Among other things, they're going to be used in our two-column proofs. So our two-column proofs are going to look like this. We're going to start off with a t-chart with statements on one side and reasons on the other. And then the first thing you're going to do in every proof is begin by stating your givens. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to make some mathematical statements that are going to be logical in order. And then after that, you're going to lead exactly up to what you're trying to prove. Well, how do you do that for the reasons? For your first reason, you always just say given. That's a really easy one, and it's a nice way to get a point. Um, after your givens, you're going to give justifications, which are going to be your properties, your postulates, your theorems, and your definitions. Okay? So once you're done with that, then you have proven what you're trying to prove. Now, this is an example of the first proof that you have written down there. So let me talk you through this. I kind of wrote this whole thing out so you could see what it would look like. And the other ones are going to be blank, and we'll work on them together. So first off, what we have is A uh, times B plus C equals D plus A times C. And then we're also told that B is equal to 1. Okay, cool. What we're being asked to prove is that A equals D. So going back to our, our kind of recipe for how to do proofs before, we're going to begin by stating our given. So let's go ahead and do that. Right here, I stated my given. A times B plus C equals D plus AC. And I also have B equals 1. My reason for that is that it's given. Given means somebody told me it was true, and I get to accept that it's true. Great. Awesome. Now for number 2, B, AB plus AC equals D plus AC. What I did was I took my A... And let me see if I can make this a little thinner here. Um, nope. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say I've got, I'm going to distribute that A to the B plus C. Then I have AB plus AC via my distributive property. The right side of the equal sign just stayed the same as above. Now number three, which is, if you notice, all I did was I took the one and I plugged it in for the B. So I just substitute that right there. So now I have A times 1 plus AC equals D plus AC. Everything else stayed the same in number 3. How can I do that? I can do that because of my substitution property of equality. I substituted 1 in for B. Now I have A plus AC equals D plus AC. A times 1 just equals A. No big deal there. Now between steps 3 and 4, what I did, I wrote it in here, was I subtracted AC from both sides because AC showed up as a common term on the left and right side of the equal sign. They canceled each other out, and all I'm left with is A equals D, which is exactly what I'm trying to prove up here. <clears throat> How was I able to do that step four from step three? That was my subtraction property of equality. I also have written down here addition property of equality because you can also think about it as if we were to add a negative 1, right? Adding a negative 1 is addition, but it's adding a negative 1, whereas if we were subtracting it, we would just be subtracting AC from both sides. So subtraction or addition property both work in that particular instance with no big deal. The last thing you'll notice is this box down here that's called a tombstone. And we use that to signify as mathematicians that we're done with the proof. All right, cool. Let's try another one. So 
So now here we have a equals b plus c, and c does not equals is less than zero, and we're trying to prove that a is greater than b. I'm actually going to skip this one for now because I don't want to do this one just yet. So let's go ahead and move on to this one here where we have the measurement of angle one is the measurement of angle three. So here I've got the measurement of angle one being congruent or equal to the measurement of angle three. And then I have the measurement of angle two being congruent to the measurement of angle four. And I'm just going to go ahead and mark that diagram up because it's, for some people, me included, visualizing it, just seeing it really helps me understand what it is that I want to figure out. So then what I'm being asked to prove is that angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF, the whole green angles. Now, logically, I can make sense of this because what I see is that the um, red angles added together have to be the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. Start off with my givens. The measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3, semicolon. Measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 4. What's my reason for that? It's given. There we go. I've already earned a point. All right, now, angle uh, number two, what am I going to do here? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I know that I'm looking for the whole green angle. So I'm going to add up angle one and angle two and say the measurement of angle one plus the measurement of angle two, remember I have to use measurement of when I'm doing adding, equals the measurement of angle A, B, C. The two parts equal the whole. And the same idea, measurement of angle three plus measurement of angle four equals the measurement of angle D, E, F. Now, we have a postulate called the angle addition postulate that lets us say that. It tells us that the sum of the smaller angles make up the sum of the bigger angle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of some of my givens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I know that 1 is equal to 3 and 2 is equal to 4. So I'm going to replace, I'm going to focus on this DEF equation here, but I'm going to replace or substitute 1 and 2 for 3 and 4 in my next statement 3. So I know that 1 is equal to 3, so therefore I can just replace or substitute measure of angle 1 for 3, and same thing, measure of angle 2 for 4, and that's going to still equal the measurement of angle DEF. And that is my substitution. property of equality, because I substituted 1 for 3 and 2 for 4. Now, what I think is really cool in this situation is that I've got the measurement of angle 1 plus the measurement of angle 2 equaling the measurement of angle DEF, and I also have the measurement of angle 1 plus the measurement of angle 2 equaling the measurement of angle ABC. Therefore, since this is the same as that, I know that ABC has to equal DEF. And let's do that. In green, measurement of angle ABC equals the measurement of angle DEF. F. And why can I say that? I can say that because of the transitive property of equality. If one side of an equal sign is equal to the same thing as another side of, of, of a different equation, then they're both true. They're both equal to each other. All right. Let's try one more, and then we'll be done for the day. Now, in this situation, we have a line segment, PS, that's split up into PQ, QR, and RS. We're told that PQ is congruent or equal to RS. All right, that's cool. But we also know some other things. We also know that QR, if we just look at this segment here, QR, it's equal to itself, right? It's like a mirror image of itself, if you look at it one way or the other. And what we're being asked to prove is that R, uh, PR is equal to QS. Let me see if I can draw this here. We're, try we're trying to prove 
that PR is going to be the same length as QS. That's what we're trying to prove. And I think we can do that. Because if you notice, we have one green tick mark here at RS, and in the middle we have two tick marks of QR. And we have the same thing here for PQ with one, one green tick mark, and then over here at QR. So if we add those two things together, then we should be pretty good to go. So let's get to it. Start off with our givens, just like anything else. PQ equals RS, and that's going to be our given. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those together. So if I take PQ and I take RS and I add to that QR, I'm going to get two different things. PQ plus QR is going to give me PR, and RS plus QR is going to give me QS. Right. Now, what allows me to do that? My segment addition postulate. Okay. Now, let's take a look at number three. Where do we want to go from there? Well, we want to set PR equal to QS. So now what we need to do is we need to substitute in. So again, I'm going to look at this equation here, and I'm going to substitute RS. Well, I know from my given that RS is equal to PQ, so I can substitute that out right here. Excuse me. So I can say PQ plus... QR is equal to QS. Now again, I've got PQ plus QR equaling QS, and I have PQ plus QR equaling PR. Therefore, PR and QS have to be equal to each other. Cool. We need a reason before we can jump forward. That's going to be our substitution. property of equality. For PR equals QS. And that's our transitive property of equality. Okay. I hope that was pretty cool to see some proofs done without having to figure them out all by yourself. Um, I'm going to be back as soon as I can, as soon as I get healthy. I don't want to get anybody else sick. So um, I uh, will see you soon. Please try the 2.2 homework assignment. Do the best you can on it. And um, uh, oops, sorry. if you need to, uh, shoot me an email, and maybe I can try to explain some stuff uh, um, online. All right, take care, and uh, I hope to see you soon.